Right, myself and Brighty are joined by Sean Derry of League Champions QPR. And that's where we start. Promoted QPR face a nervous wait while the FRA, FA deliberates on their future. Here at late kickoff, we know all about nerves. I mean, we let Birch loose with one of our camera crews. Right, we're at the business end of the season. We maybe could have done it at Cardiff. We probably should have done it against Hull. But today at Watford, a local game, today's the day. And let's see if we can do it. Bring the camera up, bring the camera up. Chat with before you start, my battery on the car died at the train ground. I had to borrow someone else's car, and my, my trousers and BBC shoes were in that car. So your standard BBC attire, Chappers, it was in the car, and that's why I'm dressed like Martin McFly. Some people will walk the extra mile for the club. These fans have walked an extra 15. Tell me why and what it's about. Yeah, well, we're basically walking to raise money for the QPR Tiger Cubs, which is a team for children with Down syndrome. They play every Monday night. Great calls, and how long did it take? <laughs> we set up at 8 o'clock this morning. It's now half past two, and the most welcome sight was the pub at two o'clock. Give us your prediction for the game. Well, my heart says one all, but my head says... 3-0, uh, oh. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Good. Thank you. And over my shoulders, the man to watch for Watford, Danny Graham, he's got Watford player of the season. But I do think Watford's gone over the top on the player of the intro. If you look at the size of it, it's like a European Cup. All the talking's been done now. After 90 minutes of football, we could know if Prince Park Rangers are back in the big time. in Adele Range. Unbelievable. I thought I was going to have an heart attack, <laughs> but this is uh, fantastic. It's been a stressful last few weeks, uh, getting the last minute goals against us, but fantastic performance by the boys. Gaffer, well done. How does that feel? Uh, it's probably the best day of my football life, really. It's, uh, you know what it was like when I came to the club. I'm sure a few fans thought, Neil Warner, we don't want him, but managed to turn all that round, and it's great to give him something to shout about. I think the manager said before the game, we've got men, we've got responsible players and we've got player players. All that was needed today. If we were in the, the trenches, I call, and the chips are down, who do you want alongside you? Sean Derry, Clint Hill, Paddy Kenny, Elgerson. I mean, I've only been here a year. You know, Birch, yeah. you've been, this is part of your life, mate, part of your club, and I can only say I'm proud of just to play a small part in it, mate. Just to get a season like we've got out of Tarra, but you know, when I came to the club, they said he'll get you the sack if you play him. Yeah. Well, he's not got me the sack, he's got me promotion. And I hope he realises, because I can't see him going anywhere else and, and having a manager like me, so hopefully he'll stay with us. It's been fantastic, it's been only one year with that, uh, the manager come and we, when we start the season, he said to us, yeah, we have to get promoted and we never think we can do it and now to be promoted and in one game. The end, so we are very happy. When you consider Mark, it's taken 13 months, that's all, yeah. to become champions. Yeah. A great day, a great result for everyone involved with QPR, fans, players and staff. But 
I don't think no one can fully celebrate to the FA rubber stamps it. So fingers crossed, QPR will be champions, and fingers crossed, we next year be in the Premier League. And off he went back to 1984. How does it? How does it feel? Well, it's great. I mean, if I'm honest, it's tinged with a little bit of apprehension, obviously, for the the hearing later on in the in the week. But I said to the boys, you've got to celebrate these times, you know, regardless of what whatever happens. And fingers crossed, you know, you, you pray that it's going to be okay. But you've got to celebrate these times because they they come round only. You know, once or twice, perhaps, in, in your old career. We'll come to the hearing in a minute, but speaking of the celebrations, from the goals that we saw at Watford, obviously Adel got, got the first one, and we'll talk to you about your, your, your partnership with Adel in a minute. But when we get to Tommy Smith, because he used to play for Watford, he didn't want to celebrate. And, and also, he couldn't really celebrate because you jumped on his back. <laughs> no, I mean, Tommy done exactly what he, he's done in the whole of his career he's drifted past his man and put it in the bottom corner um, but he didn't want to celebrate I couldn't believe it um, but there was no way he was getting away with that we, um, well I jumped on his back and held him down and kissed him I've kissed the boys more than my wife of late it's, uh, it's ridiculous well, what is your relationship with Adele like because there have been a couple of times this season where we've seen you have a real ding dong on, on the pitch which has amused me and Bright several times this one was the one at Hull well, this was incredible for me. It really was. He's, he didn't want to play. He, he'd had enough. Um, and we, I think it's because I didn't pass to him. Seriously, I, I, I felt that because I didn't pass the ball in, in his area, he took it personally. And, and I said, I, I don't pass to the players anyway. It's just it's nothing, you know, nothing personal. He's, but he just completely lost the plot. And oh, that's Adele. That's a deal. Is it is it like having another kid? Yeah, yeah. We've had to manage him like a like a like another kid this year, but what a special talent. What a special talent. He he can turn it on just when he wants to turn it on. Thankfully for us this year he's turned it on more often than not. Aside from the hearing, which we are gonna to come to, they, they do deserve it. Oh absolutely. Consistency. Um <clears throat> Neil Warnock, when he came to Crystal Palace, everybody said, oh, not Neil Warnock. And the same happened when he went to QPR. I think I would say two thirds probably the fans said, we, didn't want, we don't want Neil Warnock, we don't want his type of manager, we want someone who's gonna play football. But look at the football they played. They played some of the most entertaining football I've seen in the championship this season. And it's clearly the best team, Chappers. Clearly, without, without any shadow of a doubt. Let's just go back to the celebrations, because we understand the good folk of Watford weren't particularly happy with some of the QPR fan celebration. But in mitigation, this is how Neil Warnock reacted when the aforementioned adults rap started dismantling the main stand some months ahead of schedule. <laughs> Now you kind of think fair play Neil Warner, but I did, it, we were just talking about Adam Trump being like, like having an, uh, an extra child. His his excuse was it, it wasn't was like, me. It, it was, was already like, like that. this, despite and the fact we'd just seen his fist go straight through it. Yes, it wasn't in the celebrations. Then the old experience hand, just sitting, taking it easy. But I mean, it, you, I can't explain the feeling when you get promotion of you know short sheer jubilation and you know it's euphoric and everyone's hugging each other, champagne's being sprayed and things like that happen. So yeah, I mean. Obviously, it's been pulled down at the end of the season, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, there is a serious side to all of this. And Neil Warnock was quoted saying, because of one of the leaks in the paper on Friday, that your dressing room was like a morgue pre-match on Saturday. It was, yeah. Um, it, was, it was upsetting to read. It was upsetting to see, especially when you're going to take away promotion and, you know, if we take away the fact that if we'd have won the game, we'd have been champions. We was going to a derby. We was playing Watford. And to prepare for the game, to read that on a Friday was, it was hard for the boys to, because it was there, you know, the, the headline was there for everybody to see and um, you just wondered, you know, what, what was going on really. If it doesn't go your way, right, forget everything else, how personally will that affect you? Well, uh, I, I couldn't put it into words really, you know, it's, we have been the best team this year, we've we were up there on Marriott, the players, the staff, everybody connected with QPR, the fans especially. What a hammer blow it would be. Really would be a hammer blow. And how is Alejandro Forlan 
dealing with this, considering he's at the centre of everything? Well, thankfully, he's a, he's a foreign lad and he struggles with the language at the best of times. So, um, what a great lad, by the way. He's one of the best. Not take away the you know the playing side of him. He's one of the best guys I've played with. Um, who knows how it would affect him personally, but. You know, it's not about Ali, you know, whatever, it's not about one player here. I can see that you're desperately trying not to think of, of, of the worst, because I can actually see how much it could really hurt if it doesn't... Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it would be disastrous, it really would be. It, it, it would be... You can't even think about that, and that's why we've said all along that take away what's going to happen this, this week, celebrate it, because hopefully... If nothing does happen, you don't want to miss out on your celebrations. And Absolutely. quickly, Brian, we are in for a chaotic last couple of weeks because of all of this. Well, but yeah, because the hearing um, finishes, what, on the 5th? The playoffs start on the 12th. You know, if there's an appeal, what will happen with the playoffs? Will they be postponed? You know, if QPR get dot points, will they drop into the play? I mean, the players, the manager, the coaching staff, everybody and the fans have all done their bit. They deserve promotion. What's happened is out of their hands. It's in the office. It's the clerical side of things. That's where the disappointment is.